why did you decide to do interviews as a form of assessment? How did that process come about? Um, so yeah, then we, we had just been through doing all the Cambridge and Oxford interviews for candidates, like just before the, the break. And like, it was a really nice way to just to understand what a kid really understands about what they're talking uh, in physics. So you can test any of the different concepts. So that's kind of why we chose the interview process um, over doing a written exam. Actually, I, I remember the conversation into it now is when you've just done an interview with one of the grade 12s and come back and said it's really funny what good students still can't make links between. So you've got mm. top, top end students aiming for these universities and actually when you talk to them, they find it really hard to communicate and even start thinking. I think that was part of it as well. So I'll just share in the kind of questions we were asking. So I've got those up here, I think. Okay, good. And so that's about how did you set this up once you decided that you wanted to do interviews? How did you um, go about thinking, okay, what's our assessment going to look like? Yeah, so, yeah, so we, we sat down and kind of worked out a few questions and then tried to look at what kind of level of understanding does this concept test and what what additional questions could you ask to try and uh, dive deeper into like the next concept or a wider concept? So, so after you got together and uh, compiled your questions, how long did you interview each student and how did you decide which questions they would answer in the interview? Do you want to take this or I can take it? Um, um, the questions themselves were based on what level they were currently at and then something that would extend them towards the next level and have a look at look at that as well. I mean, what I found, I'm not sure about you, Rob, but I found when I was doing it anyway, that if you went for their level, most of the time they did come out their level, but it's that thing where they, if you need to give them hints and draw them towards something, you can obviously realize actually they're not quite at that level anyway. So even when there's a jump, like this level four to level seven part, you've got in between those, the way they approach the second part, you can say, mm. well, where they are, roughly are on that kind of scale. So yeah, well, like really we were looking for how they go about answering the questions rather than necessarily getting a strict number out at the end, because we made the questions quite open so that there isn't necessarily a, well, it's 20 degrees. Um, we're looking for that thought process uh, to lead them through. Um, and I, I did the same as John, like, their entry question was like the level that they're currently working at um, in physics. And then they can work through that one. And then if they do well, then you give them a harder question and see how they do with that one. Thanks. And then the last question would be, what have you come away from this experience with as far as using an interview as opposed to using a more traditional assessment, a paper and pencil test or something like that? What have you learned that you couldn't have learned if you hadn't used the interview as an assessment? Um, I found that the interviews were really good at identifying misconceptions on the pupils. It wasn't really about confirming what they know, it's more about digging into the aspects that they don't know. Because in a, in a written test, the questions are often quite closed. So like, it's very specific to that part. But with the open questions here with the interviews, it's much easier to pick up their, their true misconceptions of ideas. I think it was, it, to me, it's really interesting as well, because you can just push it that little bit more each go. So you can actually just, you can work out what their limit is, if that makes sense. So yeah, the same kind of thing. You can see what the misconceptions are and how far they understand the concepts. I think is a bit like concept quizzes we use in kind of kind of testing the concept part. I think it's, it gives you a bit more because they try to explain as well. They try and talk their way through what they're doing. I mean, then, I've seen in both of your classes that once you've done that and you've identified certain misconceptions, that's what informs your teaching um, after the assessment. So you're using the assessment to then go back and address those misconceptions with different activities uh, within your class. Yeah. I think the other thing I, I learned was it's, it's quite a time consuming process in terms, I think it was about normally I'm spending about 10 minutes. Some of them would take 15 minutes with each interview. So if you did a whole class of 20, you can see the amount of time that would take. However, I think when we were talking about it, we think it's still probably a nice alternative to resetting a test 
So when we're back in school, for example, I think we have talked about maybe still using this as a possible form of assessment when they're doing a, re, a retest. If they want to do a retest, they do an interview as a possibility. 